Is there such a thing as luck? Well, luck, luck just means that which you can't explain. When we call something luck, it just means I don't have an explanation for it. Bad luck meaning, well, I couldn't have possibly played any role in what happened. It must just be bad luck. Good luck. Again, there couldn't possibly be a, a connection, a purpose. I can't explain it. It's just luck. The truth is everything has an explanation. Meaning that everything is interwoven. So for example, let's say that you are walking through a garden. And as you're walking next to an apple tree, at that exact moment, a beautiful fresh apple drops from the tree right into your hands. Now, if you weren't a a spiritual person, you might just say, oh wow, great luck, so special, so beautiful, what wonderful luck. On a spiritual level, people might say, wow, it's, it's my karma. Look, I, I did something and now this, this apple has been gifted to me by the universe. Scientifically, they could you know, if you had a good botanist with good tools, they could take you back through the last 24, 48 hours of that apple, of the rate at which it ripened, and how they could predict to a near mathematical certainty exactly what time that apple was going to be ripe enough that it just was going to fall from the tree. And at the same way, they could calculate, well, if you, you know, have to be at this place at 9 a.m. and you left your house at this time and you walk at this speed, here's your velocity. Well, so of course, at exactly the moment that your speed puts you in that place, the apple had to fall mathematically. Different explanations. But... Both of them are other ways of understanding something. See, luck, luck implies that things happen in, in vacuums, that they exist separate from other things. And what we know about the universe is everything is interconnected. Nothing exists in a vacuum. Everything we do, A, has an impact on the rest of the world, and B is interlinked with the rest of the world. Karmically, energetically, and even on the very mundane levels of economically. I mean, you look at how, how many of our economies function, how many of our governments function. And then you look at the ripple impacts of that on other parts of the world. You look at our choices in what we buy, what we wear, what we eat. And then you look at poverty and hunger and pollution and, and the rest of the world. Well, they're interconnected. So whatever level we look at, everything is connected. So I wouldn't say anything is ever luck because I do believe in the inner connection of the universe. That doesn't mean that it was planned and plotted thousands of years ago sitting up somewhere in, in the heavens that the universe said on this date at this time, you're going to have an apple land in your hands. See, to most of us, we've got this idea, either it was predestined thousands of years ago, written in my horoscope, 
or it was totally random and luck. But actually there's a lot of other ways of understanding the universe, right? Like is it luck that you're all being showered with these beautiful flower petals? Yes. Right? So I mean, here we are in in a beautiful sacred garden that Puja Swamiji tends with his hands and his hearts, his heart and his hands. We're here in satsang. There's a certain wind. It's a certain time of day. It's a blessing, but it's not random. Luck implies randomness. I don't think anything is random. There's a wonderful story, joke that I love of these three guys who are walking through the jungle and two of them are spiritual religious people. One of them is somewhat less. And they decide to take a break from their walk and they sit underneath some trees. And the one who's a little bit less spiritually inclined says to the others, you know, I know you guys really have this God thing, but I have to tell you, I don't buy it. And I don't buy it because if there were a God and God planned things, there would be a lot better planning in the universe. The guy says, look at this. Right over here, we've got these flimsy little vines, thin, nothing little vines, and on the end of them is what? A huge pumpkin. Like what can these possible flimsy, these little flimsy vines, what can they possibly do for a pumpkin? And then over here we've got these huge trees, big trunks, big branches, and on the end of them is what? Little nothing mangoes. If there were a God with a planning ability, he would give the big strong trunks and branches to the heavy pumpkin and realize that he could use the flimsy vines for the mangoes. So out of the other two guys, one of them says, Hey, Yad, you know, I, what you're saying makes sense. I think you're right. The third guy says, you know, I can't explain it, but I just know. I just have faith. And so the three of them close their eyes and they take a bit of an afternoon siesta and a wind starts. And as the wind starts, one of the mangoes from the tree falls from the wind blowing on it falls onto the face of the non-believer. And he wakes up with a start. And he says, oh my God. He says, I take it back. This planning is perfect. He said, thank God. This brilliant God put these light half kg mangoes up in the branches and put those heavy five kg pumpkins down on the ground because if one of them had fallen on my face, I wouldn't be in very good shape. Thank God it was only a half kg mango that fell on me and not a big pumpkin. And I love that because so many times in life when things don't make sense, we don't have an explanation, it's so easy to say it's random. Good luck, bad luck, nonsensical randomness. But inevitably, when we're able to step back and have a big picture view, things make sense. We see it in our lives. Not with everything yet. There's plenty of things in our life we haven't yet been given the ability to see the full tapestry of yet. But we've all had experiences, I'm sure, of times when you think that something's random and then you realize, oh yeah, wait, how it all works out. 
were coming upon Ram Nomi in a couple of days, the birthday of Lord Ram. And I won't go into all the details, but there's, there's a beautiful story of this associated with Lord Ram's birth and the whole idea of karma or luck. And the story is a story that actually begins with Shravan Kumar. There's a beautiful statue in our, in our central garden areas when you walk, a beautiful statue of Shravan Kumar. Young man carrying on his shoulder what looked like one of the old types of scales, but on one end of each of the scales is his mom and his dad. And he's carrying them on his shoulder on a pilgrimage. And Shravan Kumar's parents were blind. And so he was taking them on a spiritual pilgrimage, carrying them. And along the way, they stop at a hermitage. He leaves his parents in the hermitage. And he goes to collect some water for them from the river. Now, flash over to a whole other world taking place at the same time, which is a king, King Dashrat, who wasn't able to have any children. Now, for a king, children are a must, especially sons, but children in general. But he wasn't able to have any, any offspring despite his three wives. They did all kinds of yagnas, ceremonies for him to have children. Now we go back to Shravan Kumar. So while Shravan Kumar is collecting water for his parents, King Dashrat is out hunting in the forest. He was a good king. We're going to temporarily forgive him the hunting aspect of it and call it just the culture of the day. But he was out hunting and he, he heard what he thought was a deer. And he pulled back the bow, the arrow on his bow, and he fired. And it hit Shravan Kumar. Now when he went to collect the deer, and he saw Shravan Kumar, obviously he felt heartbroken. Oh my God, he tried to pull the arrow out and help him. Shravan Kumar said, there's nothing you can do. My life is draining out of me. He said, but my parents are blind and I've left them in the hermitage. Please, please go and bring them this water. Explain to them what has happened. So King Dashrat goes to the hermitage carrying the water. Now remember, his parents are blind. So as King Dashrat enters with the water, Shravan Kumar's parents are saying, Shravan Kumar, Shravan Kumar. Now what's the king going to do, right? So he's silent. And again, they say, Shravan Kumar, Shravan Kumar. And finally, the king explains to them what has happened and begs their forgiveness, but how do you forgive someone who's just killed your son in sport? Shravan Kumar's parents curse King Dashrat that just as we are dying of a broken heart due to the loss of our son, so you too will die of a broken heart at the loss of your son. Now remember, King Dashrat couldn't have any children. But this cycle now, this wheel of karma, of destiny, of interweaving threads of a tapestry. So of course, the yagna that King Dashrat does bears fruit. He has not one offspring, but several.
we'll fast forward through a bunch of the story. Maybe we'll, we'll come back and talk about the rest of the story on Ram Nomi. But just to take you to the end where we're talking about these interweaving threads of destiny, karma, tapestries. So Lord Ram is about to be coronated king. He's the embodiment, the epitome of righteousness. Whether you worship him as God on earth or not, either way, the entire story of Ram is the story of righteousness incarnated. The perfect son, the perfect brother, the perfect husband, the perfect father. And on the day he's about to be coronated, his stepmother says to King Dashrath, you owe me two favors. I've got two, two favors from you. Again, long different story, but she had two, two favors from the king. And she says, I want one of them to be that instead of Ram, my son, the one from my womb, bought it, should be coronated on the throne. And two, that Ram should be sent into exile into the forest for 14 years. Now you imagine the happiest day of your life, your beloved son, you're about to coronate him. And you have to actually send him off into the forest. As as Ram walks into the forest with his wife, with his brother Lakshman, as he walked off, it was said that as King Dashrat grabbed his heart and in the time following that, as he was suffering from heart pains, heart attack, broken heart, that he kept calling out Shravan Kumar because he remembered. And I share this story, A, because Ram Nomi's coming up and it's just a beautiful story, but B, in our discussion about luck and karma because you think, God, what bad luck. What bad luck for a king to have to send his son out. What bad luck for... Ram. But it wasn't luck. It was interweaving destinies, threads, the thread of Shravan Kumar, the thread of his parents, the, th I mean, the whole tapestry. So, no, I don't believe in randomness. I believe that we are we are living interlinked, inter-impacting lives. And everything has meaning. And so when it's what you would think of as good luck and you don't have an explanation, no problem. You don't have to overthink it. Just fold your hands and say thank you to the universe. Take it as an inexplicable blessing. And when you have something that you would call bad luck, just understand, again, you don't have to overthink it. Just take it as something that has happened as part of your tapestry of life. And the question simply becomes, okay, what to learn from it? How to move forward in it? How to get closer to God with it? Because at some point, chances are you'll be able to see how things interweave. <laughs>